All right, let's do it. Do it. Let's do it, y'all. Hey, welcome back. Welcome back to On the Scene with me, She Bananas, guest hosting alongside the producer and the director of the show, Ms. Marvara Foster. I need y'all to at home give her a round of applause for providing the platform right here. We are on the scene with the what we just labeled the quadruple threat, <laughs> the man of many talents himself, Mr. Right. Stanson Logan. Well, absolutely, you know, absolutely. You it's are a film producer. Yes. You're an author. Yes, ma'am. You're a singer. Absolutely. A humanitarian. Absolutely. Um, you you just you're doing things. You're doing yeah. things. You're acting uh, and so much. So for those that are tuned in on the live and that are not familiar with who you are. Tell us, you know, where you come, where, where were you born and raised? And well, I know you grew up through my research. You grew up the son of a preacher man. Absolutely. <laughs> you yeah. uh, traveled amongst, uh, with gospel bands. Yes. The notable Shirley Caesar. Like, Absolutely. Oh my. God, that's like really big. So I can see you got your uh, love for music because Absolutely. all yes. great R and B singers they start in the gospel. Like, <laughs> if, you, if, if you can land the gospel, yeah, you can land it. You can land. You can land. Yeah. Absolutely. So, so yeah. take us on the journey. You know, uh, when did you say, you know what, I want to do music? You know what? That's that's this wow. So this is a loaded question. This is so much in there. Um, you know, when I was a kid, you know, of course, you grew up as a pastor's kid. I, I was a drummer at first, and um, really nobody in my family really saw. My dad was a pastor, of course. So when you're a pastor's kid, you have to play the drums, raise the offering, drive the church band. You got to do everything. So we do. I, I really didn't get the interest to sing until I um got you know my teenage years. I started traveling with Shirley Caesar, my mom was a good friend of Shirley. So we used to go to her crusades every year and go to her house. And I used to be there travel with the band. And I fell in love with going into the dress room, seeing the boys get dressed, and the band get dressed and standing on the side of the curtain and, and on the side of the stage watching Shirley perform, seeing the crowd go crazy and, and seeing the, uh, the emotional roller coaster she would take the crowd on. When people come in sad and depressed and she would flip it and inspire them when they leave inspired and crying. I said, I needed to do that. So. I used to travel with the band, and one day, what's crazy is I was traveling, selling records. I used to go with her and stay with her in the summer. And I was selling rec, selling her records, just traveling with them, and her tenor, one of her background singers, didn't make it to the show. So um, I told Shirley, listen, I know the part, you know? I was like five heartbeats, I know the part, you know what I mean? So we, uh, she said, okay, let's do it. I, I did the part, and um, she hired me that same weekend, and she fired the other guy. And I was rocking with her for years, you know, so it was the bomb, you know, and I was the youngest guy that was like 16, 17, so, but it was the bomb. Man, that so it goes on and on with Shirley. And then I left Shirley. I went, I went overseas for a while um, to Singapore, Japan, did the Australian tour, um, toured overseas. Um, then I got the, uh, uh, the R&B bug bit me, came back over here and uh, I signed with Motown Records with Kedar Massenberg, uh, you know, and so that now let me ask you something. Let me jump in real quick. Okay, so, okay. Did the R and B bug hit you when you met your wife? Because no, that I, was no, that was years later. That was no, nah, that was it was that was years later. It was you know this this when I was a young buck. You know, I was doing my thing. You know what I mean? So it was like I just I was out there. I was getting it in. You know, so it was like <laughs> I just remember apart from the movie Breathe when you right, know, right, 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 right. <laughs> When you're oh, yeah, so this is all you want to do now. Yeah, that's a whole, yeah, that's a whole, wow. I'm glad we got some time. That's a long story. But yeah, we went to, um, we got on, did my thing. Um, and I got with uh, Kiara Massenberg. We started writing for, the, you know, groups like Jodeci. And I was doing a lot of R&B records and uh, had a couple of hit records with the Atmosphere record was, was, went real big. Future Anniversary were really big for me. I uh, did some soundtracks. Uh, What's the worst that could happen with Martin Lawrence and Danny DeVito? Did that soundtrack and just was out there doing my thing, writing for a lot of groups. And um, then I got, then then I got, I was at a show. I'm just going through the whole thing. Maybe I should let you guys okay. ask. Go ahead. I, I was going through, I went to a show and that's how I got into my acting thing. I was at a show, this is like 15, long time ago. And uh, 
the writer of the show came and said, I look like somebody in their play. They were looking for understudy. So uh, we were in Rochester, New York, and he came and asked me, he said, can you act? And, you know, uh, you know, I couldn't act. I never acted there in my life. But I'm like, yeah, yeah, you know, how hard could it be? I, I watch TV all the time. It's me. <laughs> right. I, I went, I auditioned. I sung Bingo Was His Name on, and they took me on the road that weekend. I was, so I started doing the plays of Michael Wait a minute. Hello, reverse, reverse. <laughs> You went on an audition and you sung Bingo Was His Name. Though. Yeah, you know, it's crazy. They auditioned me right there at the show. I, wa I watched the show. As soon as the show went down, it was over. Everybody was leaving. He came right in the theater and say, sing right now. Let me see what you got. And I was like, whoa, I'm just standing here. I, was just, I sung Bingo. And, and they was like, whoa, let's, let's take it. Let's use it. So, you know, we it learned. took a lot of balls to sing Bingo Was His Name on the audition. Right. Like, it's out of all the songs. It was we, crazy. We went it back. Was, it was crazy because it was like, I mean, I couldn't think of nothing at the time. And I figured it would show creativity. I can do some tricks with it. And they were like, whoa, this cat is crazy. So it, it went well. And they took me on the road. And, and I kind of faked it until I made it. You know, I watched watched and, and, and a few weeks later the guy said listen are you ready to go on stage which I really wasn't he's like if you don't go you ain't ready Saturday you will get, get, you, get your plane ticket and go home so I learned a lesson in that I'm like yo you get out here it's, it's like you, do, you can't use fear you let, let fear go you got to get out there and you do your thing and show no fear and I went out there I made some blunders but guess what I got through it and we killed the show and I was there I've been doing it for 15 20 years now Yes. So let's talk about it. Um, you first got your uh, start in acting doing stage plays. Yes, absolutely. So what do you like best? Do you like doing theater or do you like film best? It's not, you know what's crazy? Both of them had their, 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 I like both of them for a reason because in theater you get to get the immediate satisfaction of the crowd. You go out there, you hit a note, they immediately go off. But in film, you do it and they be like, cut. You know, it's like nobody said nothing. You, Was it good? You know, you <laughs> second guessing yourself, but it's creating characters. So it's, to me, it's all the same. It's creating characters. The only difference with theater, theater is much bigger. You have to exaggerate everything because you got 2000 people in the audience. So you have to go here with film, the camera is right on your face. So you can just make an expression with your face and it says a lot, but in theater, they can't see that in the back. So you gotta be like, ah, ah. you gotta be all this here. So. It, it, they both have their place, you know. I like both, you know. Okay. Um, and, and also, and also with theater, there's no cut. So if you out there and you messing up, you forget lines. Uh, you, the audience is there. You got to make something up and get off the stage. You got to, you got to get through. Just about to go. I was definitely just about to go into that. So when you're doing theater and you have a blooper, like, how do you deal with your, you know, mishaps? You know what, it's, it's, it's almost like conversation. You see what the next line, I know I, if I, I'm going to a scene and I have to get engaged and I forget my whole lines, I I may get fined at the end of the show, but I'm gonna get engaged. I'm gonna go into my own lyrics until we find our way because the audience don't know. And um, <laughs> you might get fined three, four hundred dollars, but the, the audience, the, the show will continue. It is, it's, it, it's so many things that happen on the road is, you know, people fall, um, you got to keep more people mics go out. You have to find a way to keep moving. Uh, the lights may go out in the whole theater, uh, it, but you keep going. I mean, one particular night that was really funny, a bat came in the theater and it was flying all over the stage and I'm hitting it with pillows and stuff. So I'm, I'm like, yo, you got bats in your house. You need to call an exterminator. You know, you got to keep the audience engaged and, and it keeps it rolling. You know, I learned a lot of that from Tyler Perry. Tyler Perry would do anything. You have to be spontaneous with him because he'll pull a gun out on you at any point. Uh, uh, you know, he, he'll 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 just do some off script and you just got to go with it. And he's the boss. So you you, you roll with it, you know. Yeah. So if you out there singing, he come out uh, naked as uh, Medea. You got it. You got to just roll with it. The crowd is going crazy. I'm thinking they happy. They happy about me. Medea behind me dancing like this with a bra on. I'm like, wait a minute. You kill him out. You know. I it's crazy, it. but that but that's the life of theater, you know. Um, sharing the stage with such big names like Brian McKnight and Vince yeah, Fox and yeah. um, so many others, do you feel like a lot of pressure 
being wow. side by side with people that has, you know what I mean? Right. In, in the industry for so long. So you know right. how to be like, I don't know, you have, I do a lot of interviews. So you have people that be like, you know, I had this opportunity to be side by side, but I didn't want to outshine this person because of their, you know, how do you, you deal with being side by side with people with such a incredible rapport? Here's the thing, what I found out, I used to be intimidated when I was younger, but when I found out we're, we're on the same stage, I don't care if you're Michael Jackson or the new guy, you got, you're on the same stage with the same audience, with the same microphone. So you go out there and you show why they brung you on the stage, why you're worthy to be here. And if you're worthy to be here and they hired you for a job and put you against Vivica Fox and you got to kiss Vivica or you got to play game, you got to be, you can't let Vivica outpower you and you're supposed to be man of the scene. Vivica's not Vivica in that scene. And I had to get in my mind, that's not Vivica. Right now that's Tammy. And that's Tammy's my lady I'm about to get engaged to and she got to get in her place. So it, it, you have to be that guy. When you get to the studio, uh, to the theater, two hours before showtime, you come to the theater with that mindset. You don't come to theater as Sam. Uh, if I'm playing Kevin, okay, I'm Kevin. Kevin is going to be a thug. He's going to be a, a a bad guy. So I come to theater going on. Well, yo, get, get away from me. I'm, I'm Kevin now. So, but if, if you go in there as a nice guy, you're going to get ran over, you know, because it's not about you at that point. You're going on, you're representing the show and you're representing this character. So if it's, as one show I did, it was called Think Cheaper to Keeper. And it was me and Brian, me and I had a song battle and we was fighting yeah. for, we was fighting for a bill. Yeah. Most guys will be like, man, he's Brian McKnight. But I'm like, I got a mic. Let's get it. You know, it's, it's not, he's not Brian now. He's, he's Tim. And I'm Kevin. So let's get it. You know, I mean, you go out and shine me out here. So let's get it. You know, you have to have a certain cockiness without being arrogant. You have to have an ego without the air. You know, it's, 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 it's a fine line because there's no place for, for, for conceit. Um, but it's, it's, a, it's, it's every place for confidence, you know? You have to go in with that, with that, with that era, with that mindset. Okay, okay. <laughs> love the answers, love the answers. Absolutely. So you're a film producer, right? And yes, ma'am. And your first film that you produced was that the was that breathe was, was breathe. Was yes, your, it is. Uh, of your wife and the birth of your daughter. Right. That's well, you know what's crazy? What's, cra what's, what's crazy about that is I was really just. I was, I wanted to do a film. I've been in a bunch of films I had never produced before. So I was talking to some millionaire investors in Vegas and I was like, tell them about this idea I had. And it was crazy. You gotta be careful what you ask for because God will drop it on you. You gotta be ready to roll. And um, I talked to these investors. And I was like, yeah, I wanna do this. And I got this film, I'm gonna do this here. And then what happened was this film guy said, well, give me your numbers to your bank. I'm gonna write you some money tonight. I want you to get started. And I was like, whoa. Oh. It was like, Whoa, it's, 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 it was that type of thing. And I'm like, I'm sure you're gonna send me money. So I wired, gave him the money, man. He wired me like 80 grand that night to get started. And it's like, now my foot is in my mouth because now I got to deliver this thing. And I had never done it before. So I mean, I was, I got nervous. I called a guy to do a couple of my videos, my music videos. And and I called some of my friends. I called Robin Gibbons and, and Elise Neal and uh, Miguel Nunez. And, uh, you know, so a couple of my friends, uh, uh, Jasmine Lewis, and uh, uh, Stephen Williams from, you know, uh, from back in the day. And, and we got there and we, we put it together. We shot that film in 10 days. Um, 10 days? We wow. shot it in 10 days. I, I, I flew everybody it. to, yeah, I flew everybody to New York, Buffalo, and we put the thing together. It was, oh my goodness. And um, I was nervous the whole time because I was buying pizzas. I was flying people in, we was doing everything. And, um, we got it. We got a script together, and we in ten days we put that film together. We shot every day for like 12, 13 hour days. It was nothing else to do, him. So we got there. We we did it. We uh, the mayor of the city gave us love. We uh, Niagara Falls gave us all kind of uh, uh, liberties to shoot at Niagara Falls. And they usually charge major dollars for that. Like the movie Superman, they shot that in Niagara Falls, and it cost them hundred grand. It cost me nothing, and so the law was showing favor way back then. And uh, we shot it, and it wasn't it wasn't the top quality. But the movie was in 147 countries. So regardless of the quality, God's favor was on it. 147 countries? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Favor. Reputable. You know. Yes. You have, then, it, it, you yeah. have reputable producers 
Absolutely. That hasn't even landed their family right. and right. in 47 countries. So right. I want to give a big kudos to that. And But I understand because, like I say, the film is definitely a, a tearjerker. And I was about like, yes. I almost so disappointed in the end. Right. I was... I was crying. Right. Yeah. I'm Why not was you disappointed? Old. Huh? Why was you disappointed? I, because, like, uh, when you uh, would, what, what was it? I can't remember. You, you were sitting in the car with your best friend, and he was right. like, "Are you okay?" And then, you know, you started doing the narration, like, "Quiet as cap." I'm not right. okay, and yada yada yada. So you know, I I instantly thought the worst. Yeah, 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 yeah. That that was the point we wanted to do that. Yeah, and yeah. It was like the, we throw you off a little bit, and um, what was cool? But see, what we did this film originally because it was uh, preeclampsia affects women of color more than anybody else, black women, Hispanic women, and it was like white women hardly ever got it. So the doctors really didn't pay attention. So 10 years ago, it was really not paid attention to it. It was like, no, you're just eating too much. Stop, dude, watch your diet and all that. But realistically, hundreds of thousands of black women were being, were, were dying. And even like, it was like a third world country, even in Africa, it's so bad in Africa, but America 10 years ago was worse than some third world countries with this preeclampsia situation. And you know, that's why- So we wanted to bring light. Mm -hmm. that, and that's one of the reasons why I didn't mean to cut you off, I, why no. I appreciated the film, because it touched on a lot of different adversities our community face, not just with certain ailments, but when it comes to care in the medical field, you know, right. um, I think the thing, the thing that cut me to the core, get to the very depth of my soul I resonated mm -hmm. with is when you were sitting at the table with right. the doctors, and yes. they said she only has twenty percent. You say what you say? She got twenty right. percent. Yeah. Oh well, that's all we need. <laughs> what you so say? Need. That's all we need. And that's you all know, we need. baby, I remember being there with my grandmother. You know, right. they they be convinced like there's no turnaround, and right. then voila, you have like you say God's favor. He comes, right. he comes through. All you got to do is stay faithful. You know. So. And, and exactly. And that's what people have to realize. I mean, it's not a, we, we always talk, talk a big game. But when you're really in that situation where you have no choice but to believe, mm -hmm. that's when God that's when the test comes. So my thing was I was at I was I was always a preacher kid. I knew all the scriptures. I knew how to do it. I knew how to squall. I knew how to take. The, I know I could play a, a sanctified really well. But when the real real struggle come, when that real the problem come, when God released that thing on you and say, OK, let's see where you really are with your faith. Then you got to put your big boy pants on and say, OK, God, this, was the scripture really real? I got to really believe this thing. So I, when you when you got no choice but to believe and I believe this is what happened with 2020. God is putting his people in a position where they have no choice but to trust him. He's want us to develop a personal relationship with him where, yeah. where churches are even closed. You can't call pastors now. You can't go to the church every Sunday. No, it's about you and your relationship with God. And you got to depend on that word. You got to know that you have authority in your mouth. But if you, I don't care how much, how much you talk, if you don't believe it, it won't do nothing. If my people were called by my mother self and pray, it's cool to pray. But if you pray and don't believe, <laughs> there is no result. The, 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 the key to all these things that we have to believe. I mean, I remember one story, I don't want to get too biblical, but I remember a story with Martha and Mary in the Bible and um, Lazarus died, you know, when Lazarus died and, they, and Jesus came, they're like, what, if you had been here, he wouldn't die. He died. And they said, the scriptures say Jesus wept. And I, and I tell people, Jesus is weeping about our situations too, but these women didn't realize who you're talking to. And that same God, that talked to Martha and Mary is talking us through our prayers, but we have to believe that thing. And he said something profound. He said, didn't I tell you that if you believe that you will see the glory of God? And I'm telling people right now, God is telling us, if you believe, you will see the glory of God. And we not no fake stuff, not just talking and not just sounding good with an organ at church, but when you're home, alone by yourself, drink your wine, your bathtub, crying with the shades down. He was like, yo, do you believe me? And you got to have the confidence and the audacity to look the enemy in the eye and say, listen, God has created a way of escape for me. And I'm coming out of this thing. And there's nothing you can do about it. 
And in the movie Breathe, I got to that point where I ain't have, I was against the, I was against the wall. So I said, okay, I, I know all these scriptures. I can quote them. Let's believe them. And I had the audacity to start quoting them every day, singing them while I'm driving talking and talking, the power of life and death is in your mouth and you keep speaking life, speaking life, even though the situation, and here's the thing that's, that's crazy people, when you start speaking life, it's going to get darker because the enemy, is his, his job is to discourage, is to distract yeah. and to deter you from doing what you need to get done. But then that's when you got to start quoting more scriptures. The, the, the power of life and death is in my mouth. Life, 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 cancel the funeral arrangements. I'm going to live and not die. And when you say that stuff with confidence, you start encouraging yourself. You find yourself, okay, I'm, I'm coming out this thing. So I've got to sing it. I was singing scriptures. I'm coming out this thing. Hey. And I was mad every, and it was like, this dude is crazy. He's singing to Joan. She can't hear it now. She in a coma. And I'm singing stuff. He'll work it out. He's going to bring you through all day. Hey. And, and everything else, like, these nurses coming. Like, oh, this dude is crazy she can't hear you and i man a couple of days she woke up because you have to believe that God can that. do anything but fair, and see and the thing about i love love about god once he once he started doing these things it increases your faith and this is one thing i did learn through the situation the enemy don't want you to get those wins because once you get that win your confidence goes to the another level and, and you spread the word then and you, you spread, spread the word and you spread the knowledge and you yeah. get proof you got proof you got proof. And this is why I think Breathe even materialized because God wants his testimony. He wants to talk of his goodness and make known his deeds among his people. And the it's problem is we're not talking. 47 countries. You get Come what I'm saying? Come on. Come on. Yes. We need, we need deliverance. I'm Absolutely. Who you. you got me over here breathing a little high because I love it. I love the inspiration. I love the motivation. Uh, right. The, the commitment, you know. Absolutely. And all that. Uh, keep doing what you're doing. You know. Absolutely. You're, you're great. Um, I, I, I had the liberty of scrolling through your Instagram. So. Okay. One of the things, a few of the things that I came across, I gotta get to my notes, y'all. Give me a minute. I got you. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> you know, she does her research. I'm sorry. <laughs> She does her research. I ain't nothing wrong with that. That's the bottom. I gotta, I gotta get to my notes. Um, yeah, I'm learning. I'm learning. I gotta do the every. I'm doing this favorite Friday series, and I gotta. You got. It's 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 tough. So these, being a host sometimes is kind of tough. You gotta get some notes. You gotta. It's work. It is. You know. So I just like like a lot of the sayings and the quotes that you you put up, and one mm -hmm. one that um, resonated with me was. They say laughter is like medicine and the world need it right now. Right. And right after I read that, I think the next video that I went to was, uh, um, gosh, you were singing. God, I can't even think of the song. It was the chant that when, when COVID first hit March of last year. Right. And um, Tyler Perry kicked off Right. What's right. the name of the song? It's on um, my tongue. Gosh. Well, the world, he got the whole world in his hands. He got the whole world in his hands. You right. Know, you did an amazing job. Did you have you ever thought of maybe like doing a cover to the song? I never did. I you know, I was just yeah, you know, I was just filling it one day. I was sitting there, I was just filling it out. Let me do my little rendition and send it to him. And, and you know, I never thought no one else about it, but you know, people seem to enjoy it, you know. I, I definitely enjoyed that. You also, another one of my quotes that I love that you had put up uh, was. Okay. He, medicine, <laughs> music is coming. Yeah. So when I was reading your bio that she said, because I, before she, before I read your bio, I had already started doing my research. So right. when I say medicine music, uh, one of my favorite slogans is music is therapy. You right. Know? Why are you, why are you calling your music medicine music now and opposed to when you first started? That's a great question because I, I think once I started coming back to when I started really knowing what my call was, because I was like earlier, I was having fun. You know, I got to the RB game, I was having fun, I was traveling. 
everything was new, like the shiny new toy, you get a little money, you get little cars, people screaming, you're like, oh, I'm the man. And you really, you ain't nothing, you know what I'm saying? So, but when I got, when I really started doing records that was really ministering to people, when I went back when I was a kid and seeing Shirley changing the whole atmosphere of a room, mm-hmm. um, it really resonated with me. So my, my atmosphere record, it was an R&B record, but I called it medicine music because even even when I, I got a record that's going to be on my new single, a new record is going to be called You. It's, it's, it's a love song, but I believe that ministry is more than just the church with the altar and the organ. I think ministry, God said, go out into the world and do ministry. He sent the, the disciples out. He didn't bring them in, 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 in a brick and mortar building. He sent them out to the world. And the problem is, we're stuck in the building. And I, honestly, I really feel COVID has more than one reason. I think God wanted to shut the doors on purpose. He wanted to say, okay, get out these doors, get in these streets and minister to people that's going through. We're doing the same thing every day, same church, every service, same thing, got the quiet. And at this time, 10 minutes later, if you're going to give a 15 minute marriage, and it's over and we get an offering. No, people are still hurting. So it's time for us to get online. It's time for us to get in the streets. It's time for us to really do what God wanted us to do. So I took medicine music came to me because I like doing records that when you hear it in the midnight hour, when you're by yourself, and that's when it, when it ministers to you because everybody in the club trilling. But when you're by yourself and you're hurting and you really can't got nobody to talk to and you hear something that says, it's going to be all right, going to be all right. And it, and it and it'll start ministering to you. You could be drinking wine and be like, sunny, and you just need somebody to tell you. I mean, faith come by hearing. And you, but if, if they can't hear it, because a lot of people ain't going to church to hear the organ. So you gotta be gotta you gotta go out there and be among them and be a light in dark places. And so I, I figure even relationships, we most of our relationships are trash. And it's because we turn from God, we don't put him first no more. And 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 people act like we got a good relationship on Facebook. But realistically, the relationship is trash. And I told we need to get these songs to go back. And I love rap and hip hop. But where are those songs that Luthi used to come in? Woo-hoo. Don't you remember me? Told me to love me, baby. That's that song you and Brian McKnight was arguing with Vivica Fox right. over. Yeah. Right, 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 right. So, I mean, but what ladies like yourself, they need to hear that. This is the right one. the soul. You, we like the you. Soul. It's, it's medicine. To, it's medicine to your soul. Music that makes you smile in the middle of a cry when you're in a dark place and it makes you like, whoa. Remember, sometimes it takes one. Kurt Frank, anybody? When you hear that in a dark place and you be like, whoa, maybe I can make it through this, because you need faith come by hearing and hearing by the words of God. And, and people who said that the R&B music was the devil's music, it's not. All the music was God's music. The enemy was the praise and worship leader in heaven. He was kicked out and he stole some of the music, but it was still God's in the first place. I love it. But you got to put those ministry words and you change the other song called, I, do, I was on tour with Joe, the singer Joe, and I used to do the song called Emergency. And there's an emergency. And I used to sing the crowd and, and the spirit started coming in. And the club was like, you can't be doing it, bringing the spirit in the jump. I said, man, that's where I am, man. So, you know, uh, because people, I don't care where you are. You hit those right notes and you hit that word that touched the soul. Woo, people are struggling. They go to clubs and drink because they're struggling. Because they're they go, struggling. They, they, they're trying to find a relief. So when you hit that note and you give them something that really hit the inner man, woo, that's what, that's what makes the difference. That's what makes my music medicine music because it ministers to the soul, not to just church folks. You know what I mean? Because church folks is fickle. But when you minister in for, for the peace of God, that's a passive understanding, relationship with God. Not just religion, relationship. Because we got all kind of religious people doing all kind of crazy stuff. And they're making God look bad. But when we get back to having a relationship with God, talking to him every day, God, this is what it is. And now you ain't got to be all deep. God, Father God, we come to you now. And it's not, no. I drive my car, Lord, you know, I'm tripping right now. I need, I need some paper. Well, I mean, what you gotta get you gotta open the door. This is crazy. I mean, the bills are due, money's few. I mean, I'm arguing, you know, you, you gotta talk regular and you don't have to have uh this certain you know prayer that you have to be all deep with. People get that mis- get mistake and they stop praying because they say, I don't know how to pray. Man, please, none of us know how to play, pray. We just gotta talk to God. And every day you start talking to him. You built a relationship and eventually 
you'll make a relationship. Eventually, hmm? you get comfortable. You get comfortable. And, and the God words just flow all fluidly off your tongue. Absolutely. It's and like God everything that you learn to do, you got to right. just start doing it. Start doing it. That's right. Right. You start doing it. Speaking of, you know, uh, medicine, music, and, you know, ministering to the people, who are some of the people that you look to uh, to minister your soul when it comes to the music or if you're in a rough place? Wow. You know, lately it's been, I've been like, on, I've been doing church, a little bit church every day. I go when anybody, when I'm by myself, I took put on some ministry, some preaching. I like, you know, and here's some nuggets. I like to, I put a little Todd Hall, put a Bishop Jakes in there sometime. And sometimes it's hearing these words. And if I can hear the right stuff, it changed the game for me. I, I even hear, I can hear R&B singers and they, they have anointing with them and I can feel the anointing in their ministry. Even they could be singing some love song, but I feel the anointing in it because I'm listening for a different reason. Most love songs is to God anyways. So God is love and he is the love of the world and the light of the world. So, I mean, I listen, I, I do a lot of preaching tapes now, you know, to minister to the spirit man. And that's, that really pulls me through a lot now. It really does. I love, so we're, in a moment, we're going to get into your new song, your new song, okay. Favor. You know, right. I love that track. I definitely love the track when I listen to it. I, you know, I'm one of those people that think everything happens for a reason. I think this interview being landed in my lap was for a reason like right. <laughs> we started off with one interview it just went great a couple of weeks ago she's like hey i want you to come back so i'm like humbled and the reason why uh a few not too long ago i was in an accident and wow. and i almost lost my life oh, so wow. listening to your song right come on out you know i have favor you get what I'm saying? It was Absolutely. a reminder because mm -hmm. I have been through some dark spaces in these last right. six weeks. So Absolutely. Thank you for creating music, like like yeah. we just finished discussing, music that resonates within your soul, give you right. something to hold on to, uh, something to remind you to appreciate. Right. <laughs> the little things in life because it can be so much worse, you know? Absolutely, um, absolutely. So let's talk about favor. Uh, absolutely. Uh, you, you know, it's crazy that you said, it was crazy you said that. You said some real interesting things. You said that um, it really helped you because favor wasn't really, was my first single, it was supposed to be anyways. Um, last year, the record was supposed to drop last February. And what happened was I had this other song, this R&B record, you know, um, and when the pan, it was like uh, Kobe Bryant passed away in February, okay. and that was kind of dark. And then a couple weeks later, the pandemic situation started shutting things down. And then uh, about a month later, George Floyd died, and it was like and with the thing on the neck, and it was like the, the country was in a, a hysteria. It was like pandemonium; people were going crazy, uh, scared because the pandemic. We'd never been shut down. You know, we'd never had nothing like that in our lives. Mm -hmm. That the world was shut down. And so I, I said, they don't need no love song right now. These people need to. So I was like, yo, we're and I talked to my dad. My dad had a stroke a couple of years back. And he would call me like, yo, you need to say something about some supernatural favor. Talk about the favor. So I was like, oh, that, wow, man, OK. I got me stirred up. I said, OK. So I got with my boy, one, uh, this guy named Khalil King. He's an awesome writer. He's um, he got five Grammy nominations. And me and him got together, we got in the studio. You got to write in that joint, supernatural favor, yeah, one single visit. And that's all it takes. One good single visit from God, a real visit, it'll change your whole mindset. It'll change the way you feel about things. So I, I figured the world needed that. They needed, And here's the thing that I really, really got me. I figured the power of life and death is in your mouth. And, and whatever you say in your atmosphere is what, what will materialize. So I said, even if people not unknowingly sing in favor, you're singing favor into your atmosphere because you're speaking it. Power of death is in your mouth. Even if you don't realize it, favor, yeah, favor. And you say that. And it's definitely one of those, it, the, the, the melodic tone just right. rubs off on you. As soon as you hear it and you start right. saying, I'm so thankful, I'm so thankful. I got <laughs> Look, I'm going to get right. it. Right. Uh, 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 it just, it, you know. It resonates. Real simplistic. Not a whole lot of background, just for people to sing along. 
in Philly. It was got the little got the little little beat, the little island beat. Going to the vacation field. Yeah, I'm just know? about to say it gives you like a Caribbean feel. The, Absolutely. The, the tempo, but mm -hmm. the the tune and the I mean not the tune, the the lyrics give right. you a more in depth uh connection with the universe. I like Absolutely. That. Absolutely. Yeah, the music. Visual to the video. Like yeah. I, I love what you did with it overall because like you attacked every angle. You get what right. I'm saying? Right. Water is serenity. It, it, exactly. It's tranquility. It's peace. exactly. You know. Exactly. I love it. Oh, you hitting it. See, you you hitting it for me. I ain't got you saying it. Look at you. You can, you know, I said the video the visual for this has to be impeccable. I got with this guy named Jason Wu on, on you. And he's 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 a Asian guy, but his visuals and his creativity is, is phenomenal. And I said, I need something big. I need water. I need big stuff. I need. And we went to uh, uh, we went to Big Bear in in the mountains of California. And when we got there, we, and then we went to the force of, of Big Bear. It was nobody there. I know God had to do this. It was nobody. In the, it was like I was there by myself. And I was like, wow, this is so powerful. The whole forest, and I was singing in the forest, the music started playing, and it was bouncing off the trees. I was like, wow, the trees is waving to the music. It was like an anointed thing. And a, I'm like, oh, I wish I could have been there. That that's just sounds right. like amazing. Right, right. I'm hoping I'm you hoping almost started gonna... levitating at that point, didn't you? Right, <laughs> right. And, and listen, y'all pray for me because we 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 trying to get this nomination for sellers for the video of the year. So we trying to because it needs to be. It, it got seven hundred thousand views already. I think you may be, I'm almost positive, you may be on to something with this one. Because on it definitely taps into what the the nation needs right now. Right. You know, we right. need to understand that we have his favor as long as we believe, you know. Right. right. Uh, that's half the battle. You, you that's half the gotta, battle. You just gotta believe, you know. Gotta believe. Believe is the key. Believe the, and that's why we started in, in the desert. We started the video in the desert. Driving, I was kind of, the, the, you know, going through, I wanted to give, like, I'm going through the storm a little bit. And then, but once you start driving, you need to get away to yourself and just start talking to God. And then, one thing, and you start feeling better. By the time you get to the, by the time you get to the water at the end, I'm, I'm in God's favor. I'm in the sunshine. I'm like, yo, I'm going to win this thing. You know hey. what I mean? I got it. Yeah. So that's what I wanted to create. I wanted everybody to feel that. And I think we did a great job. Of doing that. Matter of fact, speaking of feel, I think we need our listeners, you know, our viewers to get a feel of what we're talking about so they can understand why we're so overjoyed over this new single, Favor. Absolutely. Um, you gonna play That's it for us or should I play it? Well, what, uh, what about we just let them, we're gonna have, you wanna play it or you wanna sing a couple of verses? We'll do both. Whoa, I, we, well, oh, okay. You, well, listen, I can find it if we wanna play I it. You know, it. Let's, I have it. Oh, yeah, go for it. Oh, you got it. That's incredible. I got it. You got it. Okay. But I think she wanted to hear acapella. Oh, you you're know so what? I've been, talented over there. I've, okay. I've been singing all day, you know. What do you want me to do first? You want me to play it or you want to sing a couple lines first? Yeah, go and play it. I'll be playing and then we'll, we'll figure it out. You know what I mean? Okay. You guys ready? So, so, Yeah. yeah. You guys hear it okay? Yes, you set my soul free. Come on now. So clear your favor me. Uh. I'm so thankful, so thankful for favor. Yeah. yeah. Thankful for faith. So so Absolutely. Yeah. You feel everything. Oh, the supernatural favor. Yeah. Takes one thing to visit. From you and my life has been shifted to thankful, so thankful for favor. Yeah. I pray you sent to me. Mm-hmm. Mm. I'm so 
Yeah. One single busy. that I don't know and I need you to help me out. Okay, okay. You make me say. We're gonna have, I just say you make me say, oh, that supernatural oh, favor. Uh-uh. There's it, something visit. in the background. Do, 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 do. You know, that's just, you know what? It's really just a, uh, it's an instrument. It's not even voices. Ah, uh -huh. I'm it's like, that's like that. that. It's, it's, it's like, it's some African chants, but it was great chants though. It was like, but it's it was, it was, it was supposed to be an Afro beat. So we had okay. some African, oh, back, 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 back. it's really some chants. It's not even words. I, it's just a feel good chant, you know? Like, oh, the supernatural favor, open my head. One thing no busy, from you and my life I've been shifting. I'm getting the It's really, it's just bouncing. It's bouncing like you're getting on a cruise ship. Oh, thank God. It's a whole vibe. It definitely is a whole vibe. Producer. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The guy named Enoch, he's a young producer out of L.A. He's he's, a, he's an incredible young kid. He's like probably 24. Amazing. But he's the next up and coming, the next up and coming monster. He's, he's crazy. So from the sounds of it, you like reaching back for the young people to uh, help them yeah. out, you know? With yeah, because, yeah, and, and they doing it. I mean, these young guys, it's, it's another level, man. These guys are good nowadays, yeah, but they just got raw talent and it just needs to be they need some, just need opportunity. And even my son, he's incredible right now. Um, the real Corel, he's incredible. Um, so it's, 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 it's just give people an opportunity and and you got a good record, I don't care who does it. If it's a great record, it's gonna go. You you know, you just need a good record that got some great lyric content and it feels good. Okay. Um, so what's next? Feel good song. Is, I play is, that song every day. No that's what I like to hear. It feels good so With everything that's going on right now, it is so needed. It's so yeah. perfect. It, yeah. it is By the so time perfect. you're done, listen, you just want to keep playing it. I just when it, when you first when I first heard, I just kept playing it. Just kept. Playing I appreciate it. that, man. Y'all y'all got me. Y'all got I me. I think I want to make it my outro, my outro song going out every day I when I close know. my show out because Let's you get know, my Let's show get is it. all about motivate inspiration and I end with motivation and what better way to motivate somebody but other than reminding them of the favor that they have, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So. Definitely. That's absolutely that's absolutely Definitely right. Be one of the afternoon kickbacks, uh, regular rotation plays. I appreciate that. I appreciate yeah. that. I really do. What's next for Samsung? You over wow. you out there in Hollywood? You know, yeah. If you live yeah. in Hollywood, you got a whole lot going on. Yeah. Come well, you know on, what? Spill it's, the beans. Spill the beans. Sometimes it's, it's it's like sometimes you just gotta be where it is. You know what it is to, to to you know to be around the people, the networking, the the atmosphere, it resonates with what you're trying to do. So I think Nick, I got a couple commercial things. I um, uh, got another single's going to be dropping. Uh, we're going to take Favor Fridays, the show I do on Fridays. Uh, it's kind of similar like, to like what you guys are doing tonight. We had Tashina Arnold on. And she was incredible. And uh, we just really, is a place that we can have conversation about the good things that God is doing in the midst of dark situations and dark times. 
nobody was talking about the, uh, you know, everybody was talking about darkness and the politics and what the president doing and George Floyd, the prejudice and, and uh, the pandemic and the people like, so, but nobody was talking about God. And I believe God's a jealous God. He needs a place where his, his place to shine. So I want to let everybody know God still got in, in the under control. And the more you hear darkness, the more you believe it, You're, the bigger you make that God. But the more you see the light, the more you talk about God, and even in the midst of storm, God is still blessing. Even in the midst of struggle, God is still delivering. Even in the midst, people, a lot of people die, but a lot of people didn't die. You know what I mean? So God, God, you know, God is still in control. I mean, a lot of people came out of it. And we don't talk about the millions that came out of it. I mean, it's, 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 it's millions that came out of it. That, it's that's way that's more that came out that went under. Absolutely. So it's so much easier to fixate on what we deem is wrong. Exactly. Right, right, right. Because, you know, um, the media has a way of scaring us and throwing us into a frenzy. Exactly. So speaking of, how did you, how have you and your family been coping during the pandemic? I think, you know, I, just, you got to be smart. You got to mask up. I mean, I don't do, I don't do too many events. You know, you know all the events kind of shut down. Um, I, I start do a lot of stuff on Zoom, like right now. Um, you, when you go to the grocery store, I do the grocery store. I go do walk in by myself. You know, you, you just gotta stay safe. I mean, you know, um, I rather I rather take this time and be a weight, be a little uncomfortable than to get sick and, and have to go through all that craziness. Cause I'm not good sick. I, I get a cold and I'll be like, I'm about to die. I can't stand no sickness. I'm, I'm terrible being sick. So, you know, I'll be taking all kinds of medicines and stuff. I, I just, I mean, I'm terrible. So uh, I said the best thing for me to do is stay safe, stay masked up. I got I got my little sanitizer on my doors. Um, okay. You know I, I go walking on the beach every day during the day. You know, it's away from stay away from people. You still can talk. We we have conversation. We do a lot of zooming. And I haven't seen I haven't seen my mom. And I, I used to go to Buffalo in New York. Like I grew up in Buffalo. I go to five or six times a year. But I haven't been since December of 2019. I mean, you know what I'm saying? So, and my mom is losing it. I haven't seen her and my dad in like 15, 16 months. So that's, that's crazy to my church, church. Yeah. So, but I'm, I'm sure things but about the shit. universe knew this was coming. That's why we have FaceTime and all these apps. Where Absolutely. We visually see someone, you know? Absolutely. So nothing Absolutely. happens by mistake. It's all by design. I'm a it's all by design. Know? It's all by design. Well, I, man, this is this is big. I enjoyed Speaking you guys. Of design, you know, we we're, we're talking about the music and you and the music and you loving the music. Let let's travel back uh, a few questions. Well, quite a few questions. You mentioned we lack ballads, lo love ballads, and things like that. Right. If you were given an opportunity, who would you love to do a love ballad with? Like who will be the ideal person to do a ballad with. Wow. Right. You know what's crazy? A female singer that you know will slay a ballad with you. Ooh, ooh, ooh that's a loaded question. It's so many hot. You know you what's crazy? You know? in the universe because we want it to come. So they say right, you well, want I, it, you, know, you I, ask I, for I, it. I like, you know, I like, I, I, you know, I love what Jasmine Sullivan is doing right now. She got that old school voice, but she will rip. She takes you to, to a soulful place that like your grandmother and Rita Franklin used to do. Um, she got it. She's young with an old soul, and that joint. I love soulful singers, so I love. I would love to do something with her. Um, the, 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 Jasmine, you better yeah, Jasmine. Tagging her in this live. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know. We gonna have something from y'all before the end of the year because you know. Yeah, I like on that. Fire. Oh, My she's girl been right dropping now. a track like every other week. Yeah. Also, I mean, uh, uh, about a month or two ago, she was dropping a track every day. You know? Right. It's crazy. It's crazy. Yes. Yes. Yeah. She did. So she's she's I, I, she's I'm on fire right now. Back. I'm 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 so glad she's back on the scene. That that just goes to show what favor does for you. You get what I'm saying? Sometimes the world come and catch up with us, and and it'll knock us off. But then we come right back. You get what I'm come saying? Come right back. Right, absolutely. Okay. Well, this, this you guys are awesome. I enjoyed this. Thank you so much. I'm having fun. I like to have fun with my interviews. I don't want them to be just boring. But, absolutely. You know, I want to showcase you, but have a little fun. Speaking absolutely. Of, have a little fun. Tell us something that 
we may not know, you know what I mean? With something. Wow. People hmm. don't yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Something yeah. about Samsung that we can't read about, you know. Okay. That okay. You do, uh, on a chill note, just just for yourself, you know, you know. Power okay, I'm about to put something out there. Maybe I should, but I'm going to. So this is gonna be crazy. This is exclusive. This is world premiere right here. Um, what I love, you know, what love I love to do that, that keeps me calm and it calms my mind. Um, it keeps my my mind out when I get crazy. I, I'm a I'm a Lego guy. Lego? I have a whole Lego city. You know what I mean? I built a whole, I'm talking about, not the little bit, I got, I'm talking about a ridiculous 100,000 pieces. I just be in there for hours building buildings. And yeah, man, uh, it was crazy. Even the Lego uh, people, they loved it. They were they sending me all kind of endorsements. Yeah, I'm, I'm a guy that, uh, it, it keeps me calm. But you, you know, know uh, it doesn't surprise me. You, yeah? Because Legos, people that have Legos are creative. Yeah, yeah. Very creative. So it explains your creative edge, why you are here, there, 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 and you right. execute every single thing that you do because you right. have a very active imagination. And right. You, you know what? You should endorse Legos because a lot of kids don't play with Legos now. Right. They and they you know what? It's, imagination. We but need you know, you know what? You know it's crazy. They got a TV show out here about Legos, and, and they're 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 prescribing that from the doctors now. They got doctors out here prescribing people to play Legos and do puzzles. It calms your nerves. I've seen people got nervous conditions, and always stressed mm -hmm. out. It gets you, it, it takes you, channels your mind. Mm -hmm. Like I, I start I started playing with my daughter at first, but then I, I took it to a whole nother level. I'm, I'm getting a building sent from over in Germany, and I got a whole city with traffic lights and. It's crazy, man. But the bigger it gets, the bigger you wanted to go. So you know, I'm for it, huh? I'm creating my own world. It's it's crazy, it's, but it keeps me calm. It helps through the pandemic, and, and you know, it is is a good thing. It is. Okay, I love I love puzzles. Puzzles, I do love puzzles. Absolutely, absolutely. This has been great, you guys. I enjoyed it. I I can't believe you got me telling my secrets about some Legos <laughs> and stuff. This is crazy. I mean, we gotta give the people a look, you know. Right. Yeah, you do. You exactly. Give a little something extra. You give a little Absolutely. Extra, a little bit extra, you know? Yeah, they do. We live in an extra world nowadays. We cannot Absolutely. be ordinary or plain Jane. Or That's right. what, what my friend, my sister say, there's no such thing as regular degular. No right. Way. Regular degular. Okay. I like that. I like that. <laughs> That's right. That's right. But yeah, so... Like I say, uh, it's definitely been a blast chopping it up, kicking back the chit chat with you about the music. W what we didn't tap into is the fact that you are an author. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so let's wow. talk about let's talk about your book for those. Yeah, yeah. Well, in. We didn't talk about the music. We're gonna go back to the music because we got to play favor again before we get up right. out of here. But tell us well, about well, that book and what we the Okay. Hello? Uh-huh. We wait for oh, you. Wait. Oh, you wait for me. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, the book, actually, I did the book. The book is called, it's entitled Breathe. It's really the it's really the book version of the movie. Uh, a little okay. more detail. It tells a little more statistics. It tells more uh, information so that you can really, uh, if you're dealing with it yourself, you can you can see your own symptoms. And the book it, it describes all kinds of things to look for. It describes the doctors you can go see the information we've learned. Um, so we really took the book and, and, and sent it everywhere. And it's since you can't get everything in an hour and a half movie. So the book really gives what really happened and the symptoms, what, what it was, what it were called, and statistics about things. It just gets really in deep in detail with that. Also, I'm working on another book called As You Go. That'll be coming out probably next year. It, it, it tells about really it's a, it's a faith book, it's like God really works things. As you start, you can't be sitting out and praying for a start a company. You don't do nothing. You have to get started and God will bless the works of your hands. So mm -hmm. as you go, it really tells all how even when I was looking for a record deal, I started doing my own record. I did it in a closet. I did it with my own money and record companies came and picked the record up and then went number one. So but you have to get busy. You have to. That's showing faith. You have to get busy. You can't be waiting on God. God is waiting on you 
to get busy. Whatever your craft, I don't care if it's making cakes, start getting the kitchen and start making cakes, burn a few, whatever you got to do, um, get to do some study and do your research. Um, you start doing the information because I tell my daughter all the time, if you're ready, you ain't got to get ready. So, and so that that's really what 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 you know, as you go is going to be about. It's about how some it's some examples of how I started and God took it to the next level. Even with breathe, I started talking about it, and God funded the the move without me even asking for it. You know what I mean? So, so it's as you go. So if you have a vision, you have a dream, you get started and let God make the way. So that's pretty much that. Definitely looking forward to the next book. I'm gonna purchase a copy of that brief. Absolutely. Because definitely. I see it was keep talking about it. Tear Jerker, the movie. I want to yeah. read the book. Where can we purchase the book? Uh it's um, actually it's on Amazon right now. You can go on Amazon. Okay. Amazon has the book Samson Logan Brief. Amazon, okay. you can get it there right now. So that's okay. still it's still doing really well for me on Amazon. So that's great. Well, I want to thank you so much for you know, yes. kicking back the chit chat like I said. I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I had I a ball. It. I definitely had a blast asking you yeah. all the questions. Big kudos for, you know, your film making it to the uh, win in the NAACP because we didn't right, know right, right. that. Right, right. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. You know, so kudos to that. That's a big thing, you know. It is. Yeah, it's it big. is. So big kudos to making a uh, top 20 on the contemporary, the urban contemporary chart, you know. Yes, you thank are you. are definitely making, you making, you're not making, you're leaving your mark, you know. That's and and, that's, and that's one of the things I like to say all the time. Make sure that wherever you go, you are leaving a very impressionable mark. And Absolutely. When I say impressionable. I mean something great. Yeah. Pass on, you know. So Absolutely. You know, what you're doing, I salute you, King. You know, we thank you. I appreciate this. This you guys have been, you energized you guys have... people like you out here just giving back. I'm I'm looking forward to more work. You say you got a new song that you're working on called You yeah. Yeah. Single. Ooh. Uh, when can we expect that? You know what? It, it depends. I'm, I'm, we're working on some things with some uh, award shows now. So it depends on if we win these awards for this, this inspirational record. I may have to push you back and give you another inspirational. Um, but I, I, my plans was to push you by this, this spring, this summer. It's, it, I'm telling you, it's, 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 the, it's, it's, it's crazy. The video is already shot for it. It's another one of the big videos, Big Sky, Ocean. It's an incredible video. Um, so we was ready to go last year with it, but you know, God had a different direction. So um, that's, it's planned to go this spring unless we win a stellar award or something. So we have to go back and do another inspiration or you wanna, you know, people expect some at, at that point. So we'll see how it goes. Okay. And for those that's tuned in, if they wanna tap into mm -hmm. acting or, you know, m the music industry, what advice would you leave for them, you know, to... That was my question. Hey, yeah. uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sadi, great minds think alike. Right. That is. <laughs> Go ahead. Well, I think, I think it's three things I like to say. is is persistence, mm -hmm. is prayer, and is practice. Ooh. You know, so you have to practice every day and work your craft. That's first of all, because you, if the opportunity is coming. God is going to open the door, but if you had, if you're not ready for the door, you don't want to, you, you know, you you have a door slammed in your face. So you practice, you pray, and 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 you play. You enjoy it. You enjoy the you enjoy the the, 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 the vibe. You enjoy it, but you practice, you pray, and, and you you really be persistent. You every day. It ain't just well, I'm gonna do it once a week. You have to do this every day. This is an everyday thing. You practice your thing. If you're gonna be a banker, you got to count. Whatever you're gonna do, you have to every day. You got to invest time in it. And that's that's the that's the really that's the hard work, but you don't people see people with overnight successes, but this that's no such thing. People have been working for years, but you just see them overnight. But they've been putting fifteen years, in, and all of a sudden they got a hit. And you're like, wow, he he came out of the blue. No, he been in the grind. You'll find out he been behind the scenes doing so much stuff. So that that's what I would say. Just be consistent, prayer, uh, let's keep God in, in your life because uh, it's gonna take. You're gonna have a lot of short doors in your face. So your faith is important to keep your keep you inspired and um and other than that it's like let god work it you know that's it yeah 
Well, I love it. Definitely. You, some great you know what's crazy? in the past on persistence, prayer, play, and practice. And and practice. practice. Yeah. We need we need one more. You know, there's the golden rule. It's five P's. I know you got okay. another P up in there somewhere. Uh 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 play, practice, persistence, um, and 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 patient. And, patient. Patient. See there, look at you. Look patient. At you. I got you covered like a blanket, brother. I could I couldn't have said it no better. Yeah. That's awesome. And, you and patience is patient and you know what? with yourself. That's important. You know That's what important. I mean? Yeah, and, and and you have to encourage yourself every day because you, you there's not a lot of friends that you think it is. You mm -hmm. think people are friends, but people are fake. So you know, what I mean, you have to just know that God got your back. Be able to go in the mirror every day, look yourself in the face, and be like, "Yo, you you got it going on. Keep it moving." Because that was when you start getting a little success, people begin to back off. They begin to see real faces show up. They, you know, because people act like they want you to be successful, but ugh, misery loves company. So what? you have to just. You have Wait. to be real careful with that. We got to be real in the world too. Like absolutely, the truth, absolutely. The truth is, on the journey to success, you're gonna lose some people, and you can't be afraid to lose those people. Absolutely, absolutely. Been a pleasure chatting. It's up. been a pleasure. You know what's crazy? My battery about to go crazy. I'm like, oh, my battery about to go. <laughs> so it's perfect timing. It is. I thank yeah. you guys. It was such a pleasure. Huh? Thank you so much. I said it was a pleasure. Oh man, it was, you know, it was I've been awesome. Following Samson for so long, he did, you know, for so long. I've, I've yeah. watched him. I heard. Well, I am thankful <laughs> for the honor. You, Samson, before you leave, where can people find you on social media? Mm -hmm. Samson Logan at, at uh, first of all, my email is Samson Logan at Gmail, but social media is Samson Logan, S A M S O E N, like in the Bible, Logan, L O G A N S on Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram. You can find me there. And um, yeah, let's stay in touch, man. Every Friday, we're doing Favor Fridays. And I'm going to see your address because I want my T-shirt. And um, we're going to keep it moving. <laughs> yeah, where can they find your podcast, uh, Favor Fridays? It's, it's right. It's, I'm doing it right now. It's on Instagram Live. Every Friday at 4 o'clock West Coast time, 7 o'clock East Coast time. And uh, I think you guys are Dallas. Where you guys? Midwest? Chicago. East. Yeah, Chica <laughs> Chicago. So yeah, it's like uh, it's 6 o'clock you guys time. On uh, every Friday night, we um we had a, we had, we had some great guests. We had Bishop Marvin Sab tonight. We had Sheena Arnold last week. We had a Kenny Lattimore. Um, the God is when we just talk about the goodness of God and how things is, have, have, have came into fruition and how people are making it during the pandemic. Well, I so. definitely will be tuned into your podcast. If so, they want to find your music, where can we find your music? <laughs> Apple Music, uh, Spotify, uh, every everywhere they sell digital music. Go get favor. It's, it'll bless your life, yeah. and yeah, it'll it'll be a blessing. Just play it. And let the let the favor resonate in your home, and it'll be a blessing to you. Well, thank you again, Mr. Logan Sanson. Absolutely. Logan. Y'all have been tuned in with On the Scene with me, She Bananas, and Marbara Foster, and the guest of the night, the man of many, many talents, Mr. Sanson Logan. Thank you. Again. We're going to play that track favor one more time before we get up out of here. Y'all have a blessed day. Thank you, Absolutely. So much, Mr. Logan. Keep being great, okay? Uh, yes, man. I appreciate y'all. Thank y'all so much. It was notated on that new song when it dropped. I will. I, we, we, we're, in, we're in contact now, so I'll keep in touch. I'll keep in touch. All right. You take care. Have collaboration a collaboration with Jackson, and that's coming. That'll work. It's coming. We'll, 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 hit me up. I'll let you know. Thank you so much. Okay. Take care. Have a good Have one. Good Peace out. Yes, you set my soul free. I love the sound. Look